What's good, Sneakerhead Sports fans and everybody else? This is your boy, Sporty IQ, with another episode of Sneaker Sports and Life. Welcome back. Hadn't been on a minute, but had to jump on and just talk about Shoe Christmas, a.k.a. NBA All-Star Weekend, a.k.a. Shoe Hating for junkies like me and my, myself. Um, this was a crazy weekend. So many shoes dropped this past weekend that I can't even really get into them. I mean, just look behind me. And yes, those are two pair, but not really. Um, one, one pair I was able to pick up with the early release on the Nike sneaker app. Got it in a size 11, wore it, to go see Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. And if you haven't seen the movie, go see the movie. But bought the shoe and it fit kind of tight in one that's on, I think on the left toe. So it was comfortable, but I didn't want to risk the chance of having to make them break in and get comfortable. So had the opportunity to give me another pair through the reservation app. My first reservation win at one of the stores through um, Foot Locker, so I got these, and luckily I bid it on a size 11 and a half. Got those, so those are my the ones I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna run these back to Nike because don't know they have a policy where within 30 days you can wear your shoes. I mean, you can beat your shoes as long as you had a receipt. You can take it back to a Nike store, a Nike outlet, or even send them back to Nike, and they will give you a full refund. So. Rather than keep both pairs, because if they were a size 11 and a half, I might keep, I might have kept the other pair, but I know I'm not going to wear the 11, we'll have an 11 and a half, so I'm going to just go ahead and send that back. Got a couple of discounts on this one, so this was actually way below retail, so makes no sense to keep both pairs of shoes. So the 11 is going back, and this actually helps kind of feed some of the frenzy of the shoes and the upcoming shoes with this week that are coming on deck. Um, so much stuff came out. The the Kobe's, they snuck in maybe three or four pair of the Kobe 2's. Um, the LeBron Kiff had a, a drop. Crazy bananas. Um, plus the the Nike stuff, the, the Reebok, they dropped the, the, uh, the Allen Iverson answers with the Kobe colorway. It was so much stuff going on and it was just hard to keep up. Uh, I put my focus on a couple of pairs of shoes, got what I could and got a of it. Um, and that's what the purpose of this video is. I'm trying to decide now, should I keep these or should I let them go? Um, not even going to belabor it too much more. You know the box. So you have an idea of what this is. Not gonna tell the colorway because that's gonna give it away, but from Nike, so here we go. The Air Jordan 1 Gold Toe. Um, great shoe. Actually, saw this shoe prior to release on, at, prior to them sending it to me at Kick Mahoma in Plano. Good event, got to chop it up with some folks, but um, this was a shoe that initially I only got because I figured, okay, I know enough people that are sneakerheads, and if I get my size, even if I can't, even if I don't want them, somebody may have missed out. But everybody I know that wanted this shoe, that's in my size range, got this shoe. So now that I've had it in my hand, I'm trying to decide. Should I keep this shoe or should I flip it on StockX? I'm gonna pull out the other one. <coughs> shoe. Crazy shoe, but do I really want a black and gold shoe? For those who know, they know this is a alright colorway, but I'm not really too keen on the black and gold. And what really can I wear with it? Now, usually I'm not that type of person that will hold so true to color blocking, matchy matchy, whatever with the, with the outfit. But with this one, not too sure about. Everybody had the questions in the debate about whether this was the same color as the top three that released at uh, 
complex con. As we can see, there are, um, we've seen plenty of videos. You got two pair of laces, gold and white, and patent leather, leather everywhere. The stitching on this makes this stand out. And I think because of the patent leather, it, it does a great job with it. Um, but I have to decide, should I keep this shoe or should I, should I get rid of it? I already know my sneaker heads are gonna say keep the shoe because you never know. Um, the retail on this was 160, so it wasn't too bad, but um, I, I just, I, I'm trying to stick and hold true to that, to my, my mantra of only buying what I want. But I got a feeling that if I get rid of these shoes in a couple of weeks, a couple of months, I'm gonna regret not having them in my collection. So I got the decision to make, and I need your help, uh, YouTubers. I need your help. Sneakerhead sports fans and life fans, should I keep the shoe or should I sell it? Um, like I said, I got some time to decide with this, so let me know what you think in the comment section below. Hit me up on IG, Sports Guy Q. Just say, keep the shoe, let it go, whatever. But before I get out of here, in addition to everything that dropped this week, All Star Game was in uh, LA this past weekend and I'm saying it right now I have to make it to an all-star game at some point and it's not even about the game or that side of the festivities just seeing what everybody went through the the sneaker events the, the collaborations everybody that was there talking about kicks buying kicks that's what I'm into right now um, if you follow a couple of uh, well-known youtubers you saw it, they had access to these early, the red toes early, they had everything at their disposal. And really outside of just being being one of those people that was in the know, they didn't have to struggle to get the shoe. So um, next year's All-Star Game is in Charlotte and I'm already thinking about it. Is this the one I want to hit? Charlotte's not too bad of a, a city where you have to worry about everything being spaced out. You can pretty much get through the, cent, the city limits within 20, 30 minutes, maybe even an hour, hour and a half, depending on how bad traffic can be. So Charlotte may be that all-star game that I hit. Um, speaking of the game, I love the, uh, I love the, the format. Them picking the uh, players' pickup style. Next year, they have to announce the players in the draft lot. So that adds to it and it makes it so much better to deal with. Um, LeBron team, even with all the injuries, losing on cousins, losing on um, so many other guys, they got it done. And it made the game actually, actually enjoyable. A defensive play at the end of the game solidified it. They trapped Steph Curry, wouldn't let him get a shot off. So the All-Star game itself was good. As far as the other festivities, the skills challenge, yeah. <coughs> I like the, the, the big versus the guards format, but I'm not sure how much longer that's gonna go. Three-point contest, yeah. <coughs> Shout out to Devin Booker for winning that. And then the dunk contest. We've heard the debate, we've heard the conversations. Uh, Dennis Smith got robbed. Uh, Donovan Mitchell won for me and dunk. Uh, but here's the thing, and this is a true testament of what the contest is about. You can't hold back in life. And I think that's what did Dennis Smith in. He figured with that first dunk, let me just advance to the next round. And he played it safe and it cost him. That dunk that he did to advance to the second round really wasn't spectacular. So when they were calculating the scores, he had a lower score than what should have been had. I, I really believe he shouldn't have got a 39, but when you look at that dunk compared to every, everybody else's first dunk, you remember the Donovan Mitchell off of the other backboard dunk. You remember Larry Nance Jr. doing the Presto change up for the changing into his father's Phoenix Suns uniform, doing the credit dunk as paying the homage to his dad. But how many people actually remember what uh, Dennis Smith Jr.'s first dunk was? And that's what hurt him. 
he he rebounded, he rebounded nicely with a 50. And I think a lot of the judges went, especially DJ Khaled, were judging too hard in the beginning. And because of that, they just went all willy-nilly in the next couple of rounds. So, I mean, this is a lesson that Smith has to learn. You, if you're gonna comp, if you're gonna compete in these contests, you gotta bring your best every single time. And if he would have did, if he would have brought his best dunk that first time and got a 49, got a 48, there wouldn't have been no question. He would have been in a championship round with Donovan Mitchell. But it is what it is. I think this is a setup for next year's dunk contest where if you have somebody like a Aaron Gordon jump back in 20, Zach Levine is healthy enough. You have those two plus Dennis Smith plus Donovan Mitchell plus even Larry Nance Jr. Those are five guys that are capable of putting on really the show. So next year's dunk contest will definitely probably be better than this year. So looking forward to it. Hopefully I'm in the building. Maybe even trying to get tickets to some of the events. But I can't wait to see what Jordan has to say has up his sleeves with Jordan Brand, the Nike releases, all because of the All-Star game being back in Charlotte, where his team, where his hometown is. So before I get out of here, gotta say thanks to all the supporters. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, please do. I'm still trying to give away that book once I hit 100 subscribers. If you like this video, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, and I really appreciate everybody appreciate everybody that's been riding with me and just stay tuned i got some more stuff in store more conversations more sneakers and this is your boy sports guy q 